Ich habe schon die Jobschance zu sehen, weil ich schon zu Kampagne Die ist über Welfare Sanctions, Benefit Sanctions, aber auch schon so Changes zu leicht Disability Benefits. Basically, just the whole attack on, on the welfare system and in terms of cutting people's money, making people poorer, pushing them towards food banks. So, um, the two of the main things at the minute are people getting sanctions and um, people's uh, on, on like ESA and uh, disability benefit getting the money lowered, pushing them into poverty, that's what people are telling us here, they're having to use food banks. Um, so for instance, last year 36 people every week got sanctions out, out of the little job centre. So that's why we're coming here, we've got a petition signed, we're trying to get people to share their experience, just come together and we're giving them information on how, how to uh, avoid sanctions and also just informing the public about it. Because, you, you know, it's, it's something that's affecting a lot of people in earlier. And the petition against, against sanctions. Last year, a mate had walked the route to sign on when he was a very ill man. A couple of days later, I found him dead in his bedroom. Because these made him walk from Pensan to Rilt and back just to sign on. Then they decided he could have his benefits back. A week later, he died. How's that for you? Bastards killed my best friend. Sorry for swearing, but that's the way it is. Yeah, he sanctioned him, stopped his money and that for I don't know how many weeks, he had nothing at all to live on. He was going picking stumps up on the streets because he had no bags or nothing, like, begging food, going to the food banks and all that. He had to sign on there and he walked there one day and I seen him walking. He made my mum come here shopping and seen him walking back again. A couple of weeks later he died of a massive heart attack and I was the one that found him. He's been missing for four days, missing in action for four days, we found him. And in the end, they kicked his door in. We found him there, and it was this. That done it. Stressed him out, making him walk when he had a bad heart and everything in the first place. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And that's the last I've always stopped. Stop the sanctions. Should you sign this one? Oh, yeah. I've got to go on job, job seekers. I've got to go in Monday. I had, um, an, I've had a sick now from the 11th of October to cover me till the end of November, and they said I can't use it. I can't use the sick now because I've just made a new claim for job seekers allowance, and I've got to go back on Monday. And I, I don't even, they said, did I have enough points? But all I seen was a woman behind the desk asking me questions on the day of my medical That's, and doing some silly things like do this and do your hands like that and that was it and then I got kicked off and now I've got to come back in on Monday now and I don't even, I don't even get no money <laughs> I lost £200 a month previously and that was just a, a normal medical I had to go to, nothing's changed in my disability, everything's exactly the same it was before, I went to see him and it was £200 left and it's time to come out. Well, I think it's a disgrace, um, my partner's come over from Ireland that she can't even get a penny from here, you know, um, she's got um, an assessment on Friday but I can't see that, you know. That, uh, that you know going very far. You know, she's constantly in pain, and th these lot just don't give a damn. You've got people on ESA, disabled people, sick people, having the money cuts to a lower rate, to seventy pounds a week, and that's a measure our MP James Davis has voted for. He thinks seventy pounds a week sound for a sick and disabled person, while he's on seventy-five grand a year. Please sign a decision to tell him that he's wrong. Due to like them saying that they're so-called fit for work when they're obviously not 100 percent not, you know what I mean, and yet they've got to go through all the fucking stress of everything. Sorry, it's it's really ridiculous. <laughs> like your mum's got a mobility car there, she might be getting threatened with and losing her money, we don't know yet until until she gets her exceptions back from the IP and then she's gonna end up having to appeal, they'll lose the car, they'll lose their way of getting around. We step that's terminally ill. 
mean, he even tried taking his off not too long ago. And he's on special circumstances. So that's how bad it gets, like when you're terminal with cancer, renal cancer. I was claiming benefits, job seekers allowance at the time, and then um, they stopped my money because I didn't go to an appointment for six months. Well, all I can say is, is that I'm one of the people that have lost out from swapping from DESA to uh, other benefits, being taken off DLA to uh, PIP, I've actually lost benefits. On DLA I was allowed to have a car because we're on higher rate, but now I'm just on standard rate and my abilities have got worse since and still I'm not allowed to go back onto DLA to allow me to have to, I have to rely on public transport which you can't use because I can only walk so many yards and I have to rely on all my family to transport me wherever I go apart from having a mobility scooter. Other than that, I've got no way of getting around. Well, I'm just speaking on behalf of my son, uh, and I'm his appointee. And just the way the ESA is, it's, it's frightening, it's horrible. When you have a horrible experience with them, um, they stopped his, uh, his ESA in March. They've just reinstated it, but they don't read their letters because they're still taking £16 a month off him. Um, 16 pounds a week sorry that's 64 pounds a month off him uh, and I've got to get to sort that out now and I've just thought I'd sorted it out completely um, so yeah it's a mess uh, it's, it's, but it's frightening as well uh, you wish you could just write to one person and get some sense out of them but you write a letter and it's months later that you get an answer uh, and then it's just a, a typed letter with just bits written in um, and it's just horrible uh, every day you're worrying about the post a brown envelope coming really really worrying about it um, and it's frightening and, and uh, they're, they're, in, they're in intimidating um, and it's just it should be more friendly that you can actually speak to people either face to face or speak have someone that you can speak to we brought my hair pillow today he's had it in his form with epilepsy. The last thing I thought that stopped his shift, he hasn't had no money at all since I thought. And also that my husband, Terry Hillary, was looking after my brother, and I got more than his money's money. And we haven't, we haven't had no money for three months. And we're, we're living on nothing. Me and my husband and my brother, we're living on nothing. So we ain't had no money. Now I'm not doing you not. So you can't eat, you can't sleep, you're not sleeping. All we, all we having to drink at the moment is water, drink some water. Can't even afford to buy any tea, man. Can't afford nothing. My neighbour's round the corner, um, the I wife's diabetic, she has type 2 diabetes, so she's extremely ill. Well, the husband's well, looking after eight, four eight young children and they've been sanctioned multiple times because he's missed job seekers appointments. They've been refused ESA, it's absolutely disgusting and there's loads of families like this. The government's supposed to take care of us, not punish us for being poor, it's not fair. Make a change please.